Every downtown in America looks different to date than it did 50 years ago, but not very many have changed anywhere nearly as much as Council Bluffs. That decision to demolish 109 buildings in a 40-acre area right at the city center totally transformed downtown in the early 1970s. Even an entire street disappeared. That ambitious plan was driven by a growing feeling of desperation. The problem of being a smaller border town is that a certain amount of local business is lost to the much larger neighbor. This was aggravated even more by the dominance of Omaha's popular newspaper and radio and television stations. Omaha advertisers easily reached potential Council Bluffs customers, but the local stores, which tended to be smaller, found commercial rates on the Omaha media too steep. Though the problem wasn't new, it was getting worse. Attempts to make it easier to patronize downtown by building a parking garage on 4th Street in 1959 and large parking lots a block north of Broadway in 1962 and 1964 didn't solve the problem. A survey discovered a whopping 77% of Southwest Iowa business was being lost to Omaha. Additionally, urban sprawl was growing across America, leaving downtowns dying. Problems may have been deeper than just stiff competition. Perhaps Council Bluffs downtown just wasn't very desirable. A study by the Leo A. Daly Company noted downtown offered no evening activities. The auditorium was in disrepair. The two remaining theaters were past their prime and there were no nice restaurants. And the stores had few late hours. Chamber of Commerce president and First National Bank owner Dale Ball was new to town and his impression of Council Bluffs wasn't positive. He described being very depressed by the community. There was a perpetual defeatism. It was the Appalachia of Iowa. That Council Bluffs was a prime location for a shopping mall wasn't lost on developers. As early as 1966, brothers H. Lee and Irvin Gendler began buying land with plans for Madison Mall at Madison and Bennett Avenues. In 1971, John Wiebe, the developer of Omaha's Center Shopping Center and West Roads Mall, began acquiring land on Highway 6, just east of the I-80 Interchange and Iowa Western Community College for East Hills Shopping Center, or East Roads. The city, however, had other plans, and they were bold ones, to completely tear down the city center and rebuild it from scratch. The plan was indeed aggressive, a downtown mall would be built to stimulate evening shopping. This evening traffic would encourage development of dining and entertainment venues. A downtown hotel and convention center would follow. A south side viaduct would be built to allow ready access from Interstate 29 and 80, making downtown an easy retail destination for all of Southwest Iowa. The big plan carried a big price tag, and not all agreed the project was worthy of the expense. In 1967, voters rejected a bond issue to fund buying out the dozens of existing property owners. Despite the failure, the project moved forward anyway in 1969, using almost $10 million obtained from federal loans and grants. In January 1973, voters were asked to approve a bond issue that would provide $4.5 million to build a parking garage for the new mall. The issue was controversial. Concern wasn't over loss of the old buildings. This was the 1960s, the era of the space race. Science and technology reigned supreme. New was good, old was bad. The issue, rather, was about money. The downtown project would require public funds. The idea of using tax dollars for private development was a new concept at that time. In the final weeks before the vote, J.L. Brandeis announced it would establish a store in the new mall, as did Sears, Roebuck & Company, and a half dozen other Omaha stores. That is, if the bond issue for the parking garage passed. Three days before the vote, Omaha City Planning Director Alden Oust mused about a futuristic elevated transit system that could link the new parking garage with West Roads in Omaha. The excitement pumped up by the news carried over into the voting booth, and the bond issue was approved by 70.3%. The next day's headline declared, The Sleeping Giant Has Awakened. Sears became the first store to open in Midlands Mall in February 1976, the first sale in that first store being to the wife of the mayor. The mall itself seemed to have a personality. The architect firm described the design as emphasizing life within the shell not the shell itself. Council Bluff students contributed money to buy a clock for Midlands Mall as their bicentennial project. 
the Brandeis store had the distinction of giving Council Bluffs its first escalator. Not all display stores chose to relocate. For example, after 73 years at 4th and Broadway, the Joe Smith Company opted not to open a store in the new mall. It's easy to look back from the 21st century and second guess what happened 50 years ago. I mean, we now know that downtown mall was put up for sale after just 10 years and closed entirely a half dozen years after that. And we know the downtown convention center, those hotels, the fine restaurants never materialized. But 50 years ago, they didn't know that. For the most part, the attitude at that time was very positive. Council Plus has really been growing. The biggest one that ha is happening right now, and that's the urban renewal area. Once that's established and once a, a downtown business area of Council Plus has been revitalized, well, then there are going to be a lot more business activity and it's a lot more viable community. I would certainly congratulate anybody who's been involved with the urban renewal project. We need to continue to have a very positive approach on things like the uh, Midlands Mall Urban Renewal Project. So what about all those historic structures? 109 buildings were torn down in phase one alone. Most of those buildings had been around longer than anybody could even remember. Now, this is a good time to pause for a moment and remind ourselves that history can only be interpreted in the context of the time that it happened. And frankly, preservation of old buildings just wasn't something that seemed important to most people at that time. Yes, even the historical society. I don't think there's anything in the uh, particular area that that's in phase one that should be preserved. Historical Society officer Elizabeth Dean did mention possibly saving the oldest building of the lot in her weekly newspaper column. But then she added, is it worth saving or should we let it go to make way for something better? Maybe we could include a plaque on the new building to commemorate the site. Simultaneous with the downtown project, the private developers were moving forward as best they could with Madison Mall and East Roads. City leaders publicly applauded the projects and expressed enthusiasm about Omaha's investing money in Council Bluffs. Behind the scenes, some expressed concerns that competition could sabotage the Midlands Mall project. Chamber of Commerce President Dale Ball stated he was not opposed to the new projects, but felt they should be delayed, explaining if multiple sites are recruiting tenants at the same time, it will cause confusion as to where to locate. More succinctly, he declared, if the projects are built as described, it will mean the $9 million invested in urban renewal by the federal government and Council Bluffs would all be wasted money. Madison Mall finally opened in October of 1986 under the name Mall of the Bluffs, 20 years after the land had been acquired. The new mall opened with great fanfare. Council Bluffs will be dazzled when they see what we have in store for them. A world-famous balloon artist created special effects for the grand opening. The ALHS marching band and concert choir provided music as did a vocal trio. The U.S. Armed Forces Color Guard was on hand. Iowa Governor Branstad called the $40 million shopping center a new springboard for opportunities and development in southwest Iowa and an example of foresight by city leaders. There was a fashion show and Iowa Lottery even brought their jackpot wheel to town to do the jackpot spin live in front of the crowd in the food court. The first 100 people to show up for the grand opening received a pair of scissors to help cut the ribbon. The new mall opened with 75 stores and the promise of 20 more coming soon. There were two anchor stores, J.C. Penney and Target, with plans for one more to be added in the future. A parking lot with 3,000 spaces provided room for shoppers and those attending the five-screen movie theater. The food court could seat 350. Despite the prediction Council Bluffs could support two malls, there were already some concerns downtown. Midlands Mall sought a court injunction banning one of their tenants from putting a sign in their Midlands Mall shop that they were relocating to the new mall. Midlands Mall, which had opened in 1976, was put up for sale the year after Mall of the Bluffs opened and became Centerpoint Mall. It closed entirely in 1992. A bond issue to convert the structure to a downtown campus for Iowa Western Community College failed. The vacant mall was purchased by an Omaha realtor and reopened as the Omni Business Park and remains so today. Did the larger new mall have a negative impact on the downtown mall? Maybe, but perhaps the whole concept was flawed. 
Dale Ball, the champion of Midlands Mall and the Downtown Urban Renewal Project, remarked years later, there was a feeling, not only in Council Bluffs, but in other cities, that if you moved early enough before shopping centers were established in outlying areas, and it did well enough, you could hold people in the downtown area. It turned out to be a mistake. I don't think that's really worked in any place in the country, but at the time, we didn't know that. Mall of the Bluffs lasted until 2019, when it closed at the end of the year. The former mall has since been torn down to make way for Menards. What about East Roads? Though Midlands Mall and Mall of the Bluffs served thousands of people during their times, it could be said East Roads, in a way, touched even more lives, though it was never actually built. Developer John Wiebe's strategy was to just keep moving the plan to the back burner, awaiting a more favorable response from the city. It never happened. He eventually sold the land, but had held it for so long that it had appreciated markedly in value. Mr. Weeby used the profits to create the Weeby Charitable Foundation, which provided grants to organizations that help children. In 2007, he donated part of the land to Iowa Western Community College. History is never truly lost until it's forgotten. And preserving that history is our mission. The Historical Society of Pottawatomie County in Council Bluffs, Iowa.